So uh, Thumbprint it was born out of the social sciences. I am a student at Johns Hopkins. I wrestled there for two years. I started as an East Asian studies major and an economics major because I wanted to understand how markets work in a most unbiased fashion possible. Eventually, Chinese became too tough, so I dropped that. I lowered the econ major to a minor, and I picked up a political science major because as a economic advisor, you cannot uh, get anything done unless you have a uh, accepting politician. Um, so I have to be a politician in order to get my voice out there. Uh, and that was upsetting because uh, I figured that I, any constituent should be able to advise their politician in an equal manner, uh, especially if they have a certain background on a matter that is relevant. I'm, now I'm this guy. <laughs> uh, here we are. Okay. So uh, what I want to ask a survey is, um, what do you agree with the statement that the mission of the Democratic Party is to lessen income inequality, and the mission of the Republican Party is to accelerate real GDP? Can I get a raise of hands if you agree? Well, my whole basis has been substantiated on that fact, and. Um, I ran a regression analysis for two years, uh, three years, and four years, each one of them. Uh, there's no correlation between uh, presence of the Democratic Party and a cha uh, percentage change in uh, income inequality. Or for the Republicans, uh, there's any presence of the Republicans does not necessarily change uh, the uh, percentage change in real GDP, acceleration of it. Uh, so my conclusion is that we need more accurate political parties, ones that can relate to both social and fiscal issues. Uh, say that I agree with the Democrats on social issues and I agree with Republicans on fiscal issues, like where I did, where I'd like to launch this project in Monmouth County, New Jersey. It's a very affluent area. Uh, many people have uh, smartphones. There's, I don't think I've ever seen a homeless person in that area. Um, and a lot of them are socially liberal and economically conservative, and they are definitely a disenfranchised group. So another way to look at this is by making it, uh, giving the liberal conservative spectrum uh, more spectrums. Uh, say one for each committee. Um, this would be an example of a thumbprint of someone who is a moderate voter. And this would be an example of someone who's a Democrat voter, someone who agrees with the Democrats 100% of the time. And this would be someone who agrees with the Republicans 100% of the time. So you could put it back into the multispatial model and you could see that this is where the, they would be represented uh, on this traditional two spectrum um, curve. So the product is called Thumbprint. It's a voter politician communications platform. Um, could you go to the website? So what was before that, I, that's what I was developing here, uh, just the problem statement. Um, here is the product that was already developed. Um, I think it's important that all, fa all legislative le levels are in one area for the, for the voter, and it's important that the voter gets a really user-centric feeling of it, and he's not contributing his opinion for other people. This is a personal vo voting booth. Um, you could talk to uh, their representatives, and you can get a feedback loop of how well you uh, relate to them, or how well you relate to certain parties, or how well your education or occupation group relates to certain parties. Say you don't vote a lot, you can insinuate that your interests are being taken care of if you vote along with what your education or occupation group uh, deliver. Cool. Thank you, Nick. <laughs> so I actually have a, a question. Um, so the last political job I had was for a political independent, and it was incredibly liberating uh, on a lot of levels. Um, 
to the point where I don't think I can go back. And what I'm trying to figure out here is, while I wildly agree <laughs> with, with how you've scoped this, how does this help? Right? How does that help those people out there that actually feel like they can't stand either party at this point? Right? I mean, so what, what, it, what do you do? Well, the thing that brings pe makes people feel like it's more welcoming is, I mean, for any civic app, then I think there needs to be a chat feature uh, on the proposal. So you can, like the use case would be, you are, you don't understand a proposal and you need to ask a question about it. Your representative staffer, the staffer of the representative is on the other side, ready to answer any questions for you. Um, they would, on their side, it would be a customer relationship management platform. So you're saying there's a, ch this is a new chat pl platform that's, that's mobile. Uh, you can chat one-on-one -on -one with a legislative staffer. How, I, I'm concerned as to how that really helps. I think one of the big problems with congressional offices is that, uh, or within congressional offices, is there are more and more everyday means by which uh, constituents can have their voices out there on Twitter, on Facebook, uh, with a traditional letter, with phone calls. How does adding an additional method by which they can chat with their offices actually solve uh, that problem? Yeah. Uh, first, in order to be able to participate on here or have any of your votes count, you need to be a registered voter. Um, and the, per the representative that you're talking to is your representative. Uh, so it, does, it mitigates any people who aren't your, rep who aren't your isn't your constituent. Um, they, at first, it will augment the current platforms, but eventually it should replace it, and this should be administered by the government. I feel like, in order to really reach out to constituents and make people trust government more, close the representation and trust God. Cool. Other questions? Great. Thanks, Nick. Sure.